And join me right now here on the Mark Mosey Show as we are all tired here on a Tuesday after four straight days of basketball. You hear these guys promo all the time on my show, Titus and Tate, a great basketball podcast that you can get on Apple, Spotify, all that cool stuff. Let's bring them on, Titus and Tate. Guys, how you doing today? We're doing great. As you said, a little tired, a little, my schedule's a little out of whack having the games be, uh, you know, Friday through Monday. And then we're waking up on a Tuesday. It just doesn't feel right. It feels like it should be Monday, but I guess that might be a good thing. It might be good that it's like, you know, it's not Monday morning. We kind of skipped the Monday, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> what about you, Tate? It's uh, it's great to be here. Uh, our voices are tired. Our eyes are sagging. Uh, but it's been four days of basketball. We can't complain. Yeah. It's been great. It's been a it's, lot of basketball, but a lot of good basketball, a lot of fun it, basketball. It, it's amazing how how exhausting it is to sit on your butt and watch basketball <laughs> all day for four. And then you Who get done, you're like, I did nothing, but I'm exhausted. How did that happen? <laughs> Here's what I want to ask you guys. We'll start with Titus, then we'll go to Tate, because I know it's a three-way call here. I watch basketball my whole life. You guys do it for a living. We always see Cinderella's, but in your eyes, and I know you're going to be asked this 500 times, Mm -hmm. is there something different, though, about this year with the lower seeds? Yeah, there's got to be something. I mean, it's it's it's. You know, it's always a tough position when you're when you do it for a living like we do, because anytime you want to say like, yeah, there's got to be an explanation, you're basically saying. Uh, that's the only way that, that I could be wrong because you're basically saying like all of my thoughts about these teams have been proven wrong. So now let me defend my thoughts on these teams. Uh, but no, I, I do think that the, the circumstance of this tournament, the, the, the fact that it's all taking place in one location and they're kind of bubbled up or whatever you want to call it, the controlled environment. Um, I, I think there's got to be something going on there. And I don't know what it is because uh, there, there has been madness before, but we've never seen it to this degree. In fact, I would, I, I think it might not, it might be less about the tournament. It might be more about the seeding of the tournament, given that we didn't have as many data points coming into the tournament because of non-conference schedules were kind of muddy and, and games were canceled, moved and all that kind of stuff to where uh, maybe it was just seeded differently this year. And the NCAA just did a poor job of, of sussing out which teams were good and which ones weren't. Um, but yeah, it's certainly been, it's certainly been absolutely insane to watch and, and, and trying to figure it out and, and doing what we do for a living. And people come to us and they're like, what do you expect to happen? And at this point we're like, I mean, listen, man, if you, <laughs> if we could predict what could happen, we wouldn't be doing a college basketball podcast for a living. We'd be living on a private okay. Island somewhere. <laughs> okay. All right, Tate, I have a better question for you then on top of what Titus just said. Yeah. I grew up in Rogers Park in Illinois in Chicago watching Loyola. And I was very conflicted with Illinois versus Loyola with this game. But I'll tell you with the seating, Loyola kicked the crap out of Illinois for 40 mm-hmm. straight minutes. What did you see in this basketball game? Yeah, I think you said it. I mean, Titus texted me about four minutes into the game. I picked Illinois to win the title. So I'm watching this game and I am basically, you know, ghost white. You know, as, as, I, as I watch Illinois, I say to myself, wow, they're definitely losing this game. Uh, I, I kept waiting for the moment that maybe it clicks in. Corbello, Kofi, Io, somebody do something. Uh, it was never going to happen. Sister Jean, Cameron Crutwig, Porter Moser, they handled it from start to finish. And I think the big lesson learned there, as Titus said, was Loyola had been playing, you know, uh, Drake, and that was probably their best opponent. So we didn't know how good they really were. Turns out they are a really, really good basketball team. They should have never been an eight seed. Any other year, they're probably a six, five seed. But instead, they're an eight seed. They play Illinois, a uh, home state team, and the rest is history. Titus, Gonzaga is what, 28 no? Mm-hmm. Do they look like the best team in the tournament then? Yeah, they're by far the best team in the country. Yep. Uh, and and that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win it, as we know. This is the point of March Madness. You got you to gotta go out there and, and win the games. But uh, yeah, it, for, for all the chaos that has happened in the first four days, uh, for me, it's like still a, just a fun distraction until Gonzaga loses, you know, like it, it's great yeah. that we can all be fighting over here, but the King is still on the throne. And until someone comes and, and, and finally beats Gonzaga, uh, I'm not going to get too excited about this idea of, uh, cause Loyola did look great. Loyola great against Illinois. But if you're asking me, does Loyola have a shot at winning the national title until Gonzaga loses? I don't, I don't think anybody has a shot at it. Someone's going to have to knock them off because uh, they're not just undefeated. And, and we've seen teams be undefeated at this stage in the tournament before. 
Um, but they, they, they haven't gone about it the way Gonzaga has, winning every game by 10 or more points except for one on the season. That is insane. That's incredible. Um, they, they just – the way they go about it, they're unfazed. They were down eight in the first half against Oklahoma, and they looked like, you know, it was a walk in the park. And they're like, we're fine. And suddenly you look up, and they're taking a 12-point lead into halftime. So um, – they're going to be really tough to beat, but uh, every time I say that, people think I'm saying that they're unstoppable and they're unbeatable. They're not. I think they could lose, uh, but until they do, I'm not going to get too excited about the idea of, like, anybody can win this thing quite yet. We're here with Titus and Tate talking about the tournament. All right, Titus, since you are a Buckeye, I will ask Tate yeah. this question because I know your answer. Yeah. Is Michigan – I know they're going to take on Florida State, a team I cover. How good is Michigan is the only team left here in the Big Ten now? Yeah, uh, I will say this. I think, you know, when Isaiah Livers went out, there was a lot of us in the basketball, college basketball media sphere that says, you know, this team can't be as good as they were with Livers, so therefore we have to knock them down a peg. I think we've seen in this tournament that, you know, Sean D. Brown, he had 20 points, 21 points in the last game. They have the guys to be able to still make a run. They still have, obviously, you know, Franz. And Hunter Dickinson's one of the best bigs in the country. We Definitely one of the best bigs left in the tournament. Maybe him and Crutwig are the two guys. Really, Drew Timmy, of course, with Gonzaga. Um, but in general, I, I would just say, as, as you kind of, you know, map it out, Michigan has a path to a, to a Final Four for sure. Uh, it's going to be a tough matchup with Florida State, a team that they beat in the Elite Eight in 2018, the last time they went to the Final Four. I don't like that. Um, but, you know, there's, there's nothing that I've seen so far that says that Michigan is not a team capable of even winning a title. And I, I think some people had a reservation when he went out livers, but right now they're, they're as hot as anybody. Okay, Titus, I need you to know this. I have complete East Coast bias. I dogged the Pac-12 the whole year. Yeah, I, I said the Zags are the only team west of the Mississippi. I was completely wrong. How good is the Pac-12 right now in this tournament? The, it's been unbelievable. I mean, that has been the story of the tournament is all these Pac-12 teams. Um, and, and it's funny because, you know, Tate and I live on, on the West Coast, and, and we interact, obviously, with a lot of Pac-12 fans. And I don't even think they saw this coming. And I think you're going to see – you've seen a lot of Pac-12 fans that are like, we've been trying to tell you all year. that They're all coming out. Yeah, they're like, our basketball is good. And we're like, you have not been trying to tell us this all year. In fact, I've tried to talk to some of you about Pac-12 basketball, and none of you watch it. None of you understand it, um, which isn't to say that that's all Pac-12 fans. But it is It is interesting, and, and I'm actually excited about this. I, I, I think this is a good thing for the sport because uh, there are a lot of awesome programs on the West Coast. There's And, and Gonzaga obviously isn't in the Pac-12, but it, it, that, even that's good to have, like, West Coast representation. Um because there is an East Coast bias. People don't want to stay up late and watch these teams. And uh, th there's so much talent in, in the Pac-12. They're very, very good. And for whatever reason, historically, in the last 20 years, it's been a rough go in the NCAA tournament. Um, so I'm hopeful that that this narrative that we have right now, that the Pac-12 is back and that that it is the conference of this tournament, we can, we can carry that forward next year and maybe in regular season discussions – get get more Pac-12 teams because I th there were so many times I looked up this year and I was like how is Oregon not ranked how is Colorado yeah. not ranked USC yeah. and it always felt like only one of them could be ranked at a time so hopefully next year uh you know because we I, I made the observation on our show every time every time like a middle tier Big Ten team beat one of the top boys uh it was it was a demonstration to the national media of how deep the Big Ten was but when that same thing happened in the Pac-12 it just it just the, the narrative was that the top teams in the Pac-12 were so bad that they were losing to the middle of the Pac-12 and uh, I think all that's nonsense so hopefully moving forward the Pac-12 can get some respect finally okay. okay Tate I made fun of UCLA where I said the Zags are the new UCLA of the West Coast did I anger the sports gods by <laughs> <laughs> where UCLA is now big now I, I think it was us. I'm going to say this. When Mick Cronin got hired, Titus and I were like, wait, what? How is this possible? Mick Cronin is going to be the head basketball coach at UCLA. And it turns out he's perfect for it because, uh, you know, they're able to muck up games. They're able to win dirty games. I mean, Mick Cronin's known for his defense. This team is not even that great defensively. They're, they're a better offensive team. So, in general, Mick Cronin has been great at UCLA. I love the idea of Mick Cronin fighting for the Pac-12. This entire season, Mick Cronin has said, the Pac-12 is being disrespected. His mm -hmm. team is a lot better than people are giving him credit for. So just in general, there's a nice, like, changing of the guard. Larry Scott, the commissioner, leaves. I think that was great for the Pac-12. And uh, it's like a new day. And Titus and I, we've been going to UCLA games since 2016. We have seen the bottom of the barrel. You know what I mean? We, 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 we saw them at a very desolate point. So it's nice to see them thrive and get to the Sweet 16. 
I, I disagree. I cover the Orlando Magic. <laughs> you, have the barrel. you have not. We're, we're debating, should we trade Aaron Gordon or not? Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> him already. Oh, man. Okay, I want both you guys to answer this. We were Titus and Tate. I feel like there's not enough stars in college basketball because mm-hmm. all the one and dones are in the NBA. Who's the biggest star left in this tournament who could take over? I'll start with you, Titus. Yeah, that's a great question because we saw a lot of the, the a lot of the All Americans are were losing, like Ayodisumu and and Luca Garza ha- have lost already. I mean, uh, f- from an NBA draft perspective, I think the answer has to be Evan Mobley at USC. Yep. I think I think he's he's just a, a seven foot guy that blocks shots and rebounds and and can score from anywhere on the court and. Uh, he'll grab your attention if you haven't watched a second of him and you don't know what number he is or and you're watching it the, the tv muted i'm telling you within three seconds of turning a usc game on you're like all right that must be the guy you can tell right away how good he is so uh it's probably him from like a uh that, that's more of the nba answer i'd say from a college answer maybe one of the gonzaga guys i mean take your pick they got four guys that are uh all america caliber like but but that's not that's not really I guess that 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 is your point, Mark. Is that that the stars? It's more about Gonzaga as a team more so than any individual guy. Corey Kisper, Jalen Suggs, Drew Timmy, Joel L. I. Um, it, yeah. So I don't know. I would say Evan Mobley though. Evan Mobley is the guy. If you're looking for just one guy to watch, and you just want to, see, you don't care who wins the game, you don't care about the tournament per se. You're just like, I just want to see great individual talent. Uh, watch USC. Watch Evan Mobley at USC. Tate, you. And yeah, I think Evan Mobley's the right answer. Probably, I mean, there's a chance that he could be the number one pick, uh, just with how well he's playing in this tournament, and obviously the the impressive attributes that he has as a, as a basketball player. I would say, as far as entertainment, Cameron Crutwig at Loyola. Um, mm. I'm not. He's not going to be a star per se, but he is fascinating, and uh, he dominates games in his own unique way, and it's very Jokic of him. So I think Crutwig could be fun, and then Jared Butler gives me major Juan Dixon vibes. So maybe Jared Butler from Baylor. Uh, he goes on a run. Baylor maybe wins a national championship. I could see him being a star as well. Okay, final question. I know you guys got to go, and I appreciate you coming on. The debate yesterday on my show was Florida Gators head basketball coach Mike White. Six mm-hmm. years on the job. He goes to the tournament every year, one Elite Eight appearance. He, he wins a game in the tournament every year, but no SEC titles, no tournaments uh, for the conference, no NBA players. Is he the right guy there? Because I don't think so after a while. And I and I know Mike White, and I feel bad saying that. What about you? Yeah, well, I mean, for me, when you say Florida basketball, my mind immediately goes to 2007 when I was sitting on the bench at Ohio State, and you guys are beating our brains in for your second national title. When you won a title in 06, it, the way it's supposed to work, Mark, is guys go for, to the NBA. Florida yep. brings the entire team back just to – and you, you, call, I, you took a national championship for me. So – uh yeah, I mean, to me, that is the standard of Florida basketball, which is an unfair standard, but it's like competing for national titles, going to Final Fours. And I, I really feel like that's Mike White's biggest problem is that he's just following in Billy Donovan's footsteps. And I don't know how you get around that, but like that, that's, that is the reality of the situation. When you took the job, you knew what the standard was. Billy Donovan wasn't just two national titles. I mean, he went to three Elite Eights in a row. Um, and 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 Florida Florida has a great program and, and a great history and uh, – yeah, I don't. I to be completely honest with you, I don't know whether he should keep his job. Like, if that's what the question is, that's not for me to decide. I will say, Florida basketball on the national scale, the conversations we have with national people, um, Florida's not getting brought up a lot. I'll be yeah. honest; it, it, we're not yeah. talking about Florida a lot, and uh, that that's certainly a change from ten years ago for sure. Tate, what about you? Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's the biggest difference, right? Florida should be able to get a Chandler Parsons type player. We should know who's coming out of their team, you know, entering the draft. I feel like Patrick Young was like the last guy that America was really locked in on when we talked about Florida basketball. So um, they need something. They need some sort of pick. Yeah, maybe Bradley Beal comes back and says, you know, like, this is Florida basketball. They, they need an identity. I don't think Mike White has that. Like you said, it's it's very, you know, even killed. There is this little hint of, you know, who do we get if we don't have Mike White? You know, who is the answer? Um, but, you know, maybe maybe if, you know, seven years seems to be the time when you make the move. So next year he comes back, there, there's the same kind of runaround. Maybe that's when they decide to move forward. Hey, it could be worse. You could be Kentucky right now. 
That, yeah. that's why. There you go. There you go. Okay. How can we check out the podcast for everything with Titus and Tate? Yeah, we're uh, available wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spotify, whatever else is out there. Uh, we're also been doing these these YouTube live streams uh, every night at the end of all the action. So we've been having fun doing those. So you can watch the show if you'd rather do that. If if you're uh, sitting sitting on the couch watching basketball all day and you want something to unwind, maybe throw us on and uh, you'll watch us talk about it. Or if, if yeah, if you're more a podcast person, you can listen to us, uh, listen to us there. But yeah, we, we've been having fun doing it and we, we appreciate you having us on and uh, yeah, look forward to doing it again soon. <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for coming on and stay safe out there. All right. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark.